Hi, Sally Walker here, your hormone and slow age expert, and welcome to Sunlight Week. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about vitamin D. Um, we're going to talk about how it's produced, and we're going to talk about why we might be deficient, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, where we might find it in foods. Okay, so vitamin D is produced in the body, and it requires uh, ultraviolet B rays, okay? So if you've been reading a little bit about the ultraviolet Bs, you, you know that they can be particularly dangerous for the body. But unfortunately, we seem to have um, a bit of a challenge here because we need the ultraviolet Bs to actually produce vitamin D. So what happens? So in um, some very special skin cells called keratinocytes, which are in the epidermis of the upper layer of the skin, these very special little skin cells, they actually convert cholesterol to vitamin D3, as it's called, okay? So, and this conversion is triggered, is started by um, UV, UVB rays, okay? So we need this, otherwise we're not gonna produce vitamin D. So we need, we need vitamin D. It's such an important vitamin, and we'll talk about why in a little bit, but uh, we need to produce it. So, so in these little cells called the kero, keratinocytes in your epidermis, you will start the production of vitamin D3. Now, vitamin D3 is not the end product and is not the active hormone. So what happens with this is, that it will be uh, then transported from your skin cells to your liver. And in your liver, it will be stored, or we can store it, but it will also be converted to another type of vitamin D. And hey-ho, that's not the end product either. <laughs> that will happen in the kidneys, okay? So when we get to the kidneys, the... Um, uh, the end product is something called calcitriol, that's your end product, and this is the active vitamin, or in actual fact, it is the active hormone at the end of the day. Okay, so long journey from your skin cells uh, all the way to your kidneys uh, via your liver. Okay, so UVBs, now the dilemma, the big dilemma here is that the production of vitamin D is highest, in the summer months, um, when uh, the sun is high and when your shadow is shorter than you. Mm. So this is in the middle of the day and this is where we're saying that this is also where most damage is done uh, to your skin cells and, and possibly to your DNA. So it's a real dilemma, isn't it? Okay, so, so we, don't need, we don't need very much. We don't need more than about 15, 20 minutes, maybe three to four times a week. But we need to be pretty much naked. <laughs> the more skin which is exposed to the sun, the more vitamin D you're going to produce, okay? And also it means that the vitamin D production is basically in those summer months. So the further away from the equator that you live, the, the summer months become shorter, don't they? So somewhere, you know, in, the, in Europe, the UK, etc. So somewhere between, you know, April, May and September, okay? Now, we are very fortunate because our liver can store about three months supply uh, of this hormone which is sent to your kidneys and to be activated. Okay, so that's good, isn't it? Now, um, so that means that if you've had a real good summer and you've topped up and your liver's full and you've got three months supply, so we'll say October, November, December, okay? And so that means in your Christmas presents, you want to want to get uh, some vitamin D capsules and you want to start focusing on the foods which are going to give you vitamin D until you get to about April, May again when the sun can be effective and you can start topping up on your vitamin D, yeah. Okay, so it is a dilemma. Um, there are many dilemmas related to the human body, but this is especially one of them. We need the UVBs to make vitamin D, but we also need to be very careful of the UVBs because they can damage the skin. But what the most important thing is that they can uh, instigate or trigger these uh, genetic mutations and, and create cancers. So, so you know, we, we have to be very, very careful. So remember, you only need about 15, 20 minutes in the middle of the day, three or four times a week, but you want to be as naked as possible, yes. So you have my permission to start uh, uh, running around uh, without, your, without your clothes on. Mm, okay. Uh, yay. So we're going to have a little look in a minute about why you might be deficient. But so 
we need to make sure we're getting some foods, don't we, as well, which are going to help us in that period of time where we can't uh, get the sunshine because we, we live in one of these uh, countries which are further away from the equator. Okay, so vitamin D3. So this is the best one because it's, uh, it's easier for the body to, or more um, automatic for the body to, to convert to the more active uh, type um, vitamins, okay? Uh, vitamin D types, yeah. So vitamin D3 is found in foods like, now the best source, Funnily enough, the best source is liver. <laughs> because liver stores, so that means that little the cows and the piggies and whatever it is for an animal are going to be storing their vitamin D as well in the liver. So get your liver. Uh, maybe some of you grew up with cod liver oil, didn't you? An amazing amount of vitamin D in that. So that could be a good one to take through the winter months as well. That was one of the reasons why your, your ancestors were doing so or why you did as a child, yeah. It tastes a bit better today than it used to do when we were children, yes, okay. So oily fish, so we've got things like your sardines and your mackerels and your herrings and your eels and uh, your salmons and this kind of thing. They will all have uh, good amounts of vitamin D, especially their livers as well. Mm. Eggs, especially egg yolks. And then also taking it as a supplement. And you want to make sure you're taking it as an, as an oil um, and not a dried pill because it is a fat soluble. So we would like to be it in its uh, fat soluble state. Okay. Now you can take a, a vitamin D and some, a vitamin D2, sorry. And some of the supplements are a combination of twos and threes. Okay. So, but as I said, the three is, is more automatic for the body to, to convert. So, so vitamin D2 is not is, is found in some vegetation, especially if, uh, for example, fungi, uh, mushroomy things, which are cultivated under UV lamps, okay? But otherwise, it is very often used in the foods which are fortified with, uh, with, with vitamin D. So if you have a little look on the, uh, on the milk, for example, or, or another f uh, food product, and it says fortified with vitamin D, then it will very often be vitamin with D2, okay? So, and as I said, you can take it as a supplement and very often these supplements will be a combination of D2 and D3, but you can also get it just as a, as a D3 and I would recommend you doing that, okay? So we need to um, support our vitamins and, and if you are a person who really has difficulties being in the sun for about 15 minutes, then you're possibly wanting to make sure that you um, are supplementing and you definitely want to get your levels tested this is a really important thing and I'll talk about that in the next little video um, anyway so in the information about vitamin D production there is um, a suggested supplement and this is a really good supplement from a company called Better You and uh, when you spray it in your mouth as you do it will be absorbed directly there so bypasses the gut so if anyone has any gut problems um, then this could be a good way to get your vitamin D in. Happy hormones, happy life.